Hey guys, this is Alexandra from ilovenots.com. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a super chunky afghan worked in simple single crochets. You can work it in one solid color or you can work it striped. I am going to show you how to change colors and work it striped. You're going to need an M13 9mm crochet hook. You'll also want a small crochet hook that has a, a deep throat. This is what I'm going to use to weave in my ends. It is so much easier than trying to thread this super chunky yarn into a tapestry needle and fight with it while you're trying to weave it in. They do have crochet hooks that have more shallow necks and those don't work as well. This is my G6 4.25 boy crochet hook. Real quick before we get started, I realized that I did not talk about the yarn. This is Bernat Blanket Yarn. This is my favorite yarn for making blankets with. It is soft and it's durable. It wears well and it machine washes and dries beautifully. I really love this yarn. I wish they had it in different weights. If you don't have this on hand, you can use two or three strands held together of a worsted weight yarn like Red Heart Super Saver. You may want to check gauge because I'm not really sure which one if it's going to require two strands held together or three strands held together. If the size does not matter to you you can do it with a with a number five weight chunky yarn and you may want to go up a hook size I'm not really sure because I haven't tested it out. But you can experiment with it. Check your gauge and you might be right on. If the size isn't important and if you're a little bit off, then just continue anyways or add a couple stitch, you know, go up a, a blanket size maybe. Stitch markers are also really helpful. If you have them, they're going to be helpful when you work the border. If you don't have them, you can use scrap pieces of yarn, you can use a bobby pin or a safety pin, or you can just eye it or count your stitches. It's just super easy if you have either of these handy. Now, let's get started on this blanket. We're going to start with a slip knot. I have the yarn coming from my ball here over my fingers. Wrap the yarn around my index finger two times. Then I'm going to hold the tension right here between my middle finger and my thumb. The loop that's on the left will pull it up over the other loop but not off my finger. And now the loop on the left will pull it up over the other one and off my finger. Then I'll take my crochet hook and I'll insert it right into the center hole there. And I'll just pull on the short tail end and it will tighten up to normal tension. We don't want it too tight, just to normal tension there. I'm going to work a small sample for this so it's easy to see on camera so I can show you all the techniques. But I have 11 sizes available for this blanket. I'm going to start with just a chain six. To chain, we yarn over the hook and we pull through. Yarn over and pull through. Yarn over, pull through. We have three, four, five, six. We're going to insert our hook into the second stitch from the hook. We don't count this one that is on our crochet hook, so there's the first one, and here's the second one. We're going to insert our hook right into the center of that stitch. Yarn over, pull through. We have two loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through both loops. That is a single crochet, so we've just single crocheted into the second chain from the hook, and now we'll continue single crocheting into each chain all the way across. Insert our hook right into the center of the chain. Yarn over, pull through. Two loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through both loops. Insert your hook into the center of the stitch. Yarn over, pull through. Two loops. Yarn over, pull through both loops. 
that's three, four, five single crochets. We started with a chain six, we skipped that first one, so we end up with five single crochets. And to count them, you can look at the V stitches on the top. Each V stitch is a stitch, so one, two, three, four, five single crochets. Each row is worked just like this next row I'm about to show you. We're going to first chain one, yarn over, pull through, and turn our work. And we're going to single crochet into the first stitch and each stitch across. Insert your hook into the first stitch, picking up both loops of that stitch, yarn over, pull through, two loops, yarn over, pull through both loops, just as before, same exact way. And we'll work across the row. And we just want to make sure that we have the same amount of stitches here that we had in the previous row. One, two, three, four, five single crochets. As you work, you may want to stop periodically and count your stitches just to make sure you didn't end up with an extra one or lose one. You'll work each of the remaining rows exactly the same. Chain one, turn, single crochet into the first single crochet, and each single crochet all the way across. I'm going to work five rows here and then I'll show you how to change colors. Here I have worked five rows, and to count them, they kind of group themselves together. You can see right here that it looks like two rows together, and then there's like definition. The same way this is a first row, and then there's like a line of definition there. So I always count two, four, six, eight. It's much, it's much easier to do it that way and then you go back and you add this one. Or if you go from the other side, because the rows are turned, it looks a little bit differently, but you can still see how these two have grouped themselves together, and these two have grouped themselves together, two, four, five. It's just easy to go by these groups of two. For some of the sizes, you will work an odd numbered color block. I always try to make it an even numbered color block, otherwise it shows here on the sides when you change the color. So for sizes that have odd numbered color blocks, this is the way that I recommend doing your color change. You're going to work all the way across the row as normal. After you work the last stitch, you're going to grab your new color. So I've just left a little tail to weave in, made a loop, put that loop on the hook and pull it through, then take the tail end of the original color and pull it tight. Not too tight because this yarn will break if you pull it too tight. Just tight enough that it disappears. Usually it twists the chain so I reposition my hook and now I'm ready to chain one. Turn and work all the way across the row.
and then I'll chain one, turn, and I'm ready to work across the row again. And if it starts to, to pop up, you just tug it down a little bit, and it, dis it disappears. It keeps it even. That's how I make seamless color changes a lot of the time. I think that way hides it a lot better than the traditional way. But if I'm working an even number of rows for a color block, then I change colors the traditional way. Let me take this green out. I'm going to work one more row in this uh, tan color so I have an even number. Now I have six rows here. I'm actually going to take out this last one and so when I have an even number of rows I work the color change in the traditional manner and this is how it is. You get up to your very last stitch in this color, insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, you have the two loops on your hook. Now we're at the point where we would work our last yarn over and pull through but instead of doing that in this tan we're going to introduce our new color. And you do it the same way, leave a little tail to weave in, make a loop, put the loop on your hook, and then pull that new color through, as if that was the yarn over. Putting the loop on the hook as a yarn over, and then you pulled it through both loops. Then you drop the tail end, and you chain one and turn, work all the way across. Those are just the two ways that I recommend. You can do it this traditional way that I just showed, regardless of whether you have even or odd number of rows. I just think that for even numbers, it works best for the edges to blend and remain even if you work a traditional way. And for odd number rows of color block, it's more seamless and even if you do it um, where you work the whole way across and you pull it and tight tighten that beginning chain. Excuse me! As far as the tail ends, if you have small color blocks and all your color changes are on the same side, it's real easy to carry your yarn up. But because these color blocks are several rows, I just fasten off each time I change colors and then I go and weave that in later. So, for each color block, you'll have two ends to weave in. To start our border, we're going to chain one and turn. The first round of the border is worked in regular single crochets, just as we have been doing. The second round and each round after that is worked into the back loop only. This first round is going to set it up so that we can work in the back loop only. First thing we're going to do is we're going to work two single crochets into the first stitch. So right into this first stitch here we're going to work as normal, just two single crochets. Then we're going to single crochet across. Now we've reached one of our corners. In the beginning we worked two single crochets, that's one of our corners that we will complete at the end. Here we've worked across to our very last stitch of the row and we need to increase in the stitch so that our corner will lay flat and overall the edges won't take on a bull shape. So to do that we're just going to work three single crochets into that stitch. When you're working the top and the bottom, to figure out how many stitches you have here in the center, 
you're going to take whatever your total number of stitches is for the width, minus 5, and then I'll subtract 2 stitches, and that will be for the two corners where I'm going to increase. So 5 minus 2 is 3. I have three single crochets here in the center. And when you do it on the bottom side, it'll be exactly the same. It'll be the two corners where you're increasing and three single crochets. So now we've increased in our corner. Now we're going to turn our work so we can work down the side. And in crochet patterns, you'll see it written as crochet evenly down the side, up the side, crochet evenly around. This is what they're talking about. To work evenly into fabric worked in single crochets, you work one single crochet into the side of each row. So right here along the top, we're looking at the top edge. There are two stitches that we see here on the side. The first one we see here is just a hole, it's a regular hole. And then we see this one that kind of looks like a, like it's swooping over. And that repeats all the way down. We want to work as close to the edge as possible. So for this next row right here, we're going to insert our hook into the center of where it's swooping. There's a top leg there, a bottom leg there. We want to insert our hook right into the center of that. And when we do, we're going to pick up two stitches on our hook. There we go, there's two stitches. You're grabbing the top, the top leg and the one that was behind it. And then complete a single crochet as normal. For the next one that's just a hole, we just insert right into that hole. Then the next one has that leg that's swooping over. We'll insert our hook into the center in between the top leg and the bottom leg, picking up two loops on our hook, and complete a single crochet. Next row has a hole, and then the next one has one of those swooping over legs as well. So insert right into the center, picking up two loops. Now we've reached the next corner, and we're going to increase again. We're just going to insert our hook and work three single crochets into that stitch. And now the side is done. And when you're working the down the side, up the side, the number of stitches match. And to figure this out, you take your total number of rows that you've worked for your project minus one and that's how many stitches you have down here in the center so I have six rows here minus one six minus one is five one two three four five single crochets and you just want to make sure when you work the other side that it matches it has the two corners and then it has five single crochets in the center before I continue I want to show you a trick that's going to help you in, in the future rows. These are stitch markers. You could also use um, scraps of yarn. It helps if they're a different color. We're going to be working into the center of the chain threes each time when we work a board around. So it really helps you if you mark them so you don't have to count across or keep an eye out on where the corners come in. You can just put your stitch marker right into the center of the three single crochets that you worked in there. And now that I just finished this corner over here, I'm going to go ahead and just mark the center of the three single crochets that I worked there. And this will help you so in the future rounds of the border, you don't have to count how many stitches are here or look out for the center of that corner. You just work your increase in that stitch marker, then replace the stitch marker on the top, work all the way across, now you've come to another stitch marker, you work another increase. It's the easiest way to do it. Now we're going to work across 
the bottom edge of the foundation chain. These look pretty similar to the top. We're going to insert our hook into the center of that chain, picking up two legs, and complete a single crochet. Insert your hook into the next chain, picking up both legs. So it's very similar to working on the top. And remember we talked about it on the top here, the bottom matches, so we have our corner, then we have one, two, three single crochets, so now we're going to work another corner. Same exact way, three single crochets. Now I'll place my stitch marker there, I don't have any more of these right next to me, so I'm just going to use a scrap piece of yarn, and I'll just insert it right there, and pull through. And I'm just going to leave it hanging like that because it's not going to slip out. And now we're going to work up the side and this side is going to match this other side. So we have our corner here and our corner here and we're going to have five single crochets. One in the side edge of each row. And the stitches look a little bit differently on this side because we're looking at the back side of it. So the next one that we're working in is a hole. The next row, it's got a bottom leg here, a top leg here, and a back bump right in the middle. We want to insert our hook right into the center in between the back bump and the bottom leg. And that will give us our two stitches on the top. The next row is a hole. The next row has the swoopy legs, so insert right into the center in between the back bump and the bottom leg. Insert into the hole. One, two, three, four, five single crochets. So we've worked our whole entire edge there. Now we're going to complete the round. This first stitch had two single crochets worked into it initially. So now we just need to insert our hook back into that first stitch and work one more single crochet to complete a corner of three. If you're going to continue your whole blanket in plain single crochets just as we've done here, you'll slip stitch under both loops of the first single crochet. But because all the remaining rounds are going to be worked in the back loop only, I'm going to slip stitch in the back loop of this. So normally we would pick up the entire stitch right here with both with both loops on our hook, right? We're not going to do that right now. We're going to insert our hook into the back loop. This one here is the front loop, and this one here is the back loop. So we insert our hook right down the center, splitting them in half. Continue to come out on the wrong side of the fabric. And now you have the back loop on your hook, and you yarn over, pull through that loop, and the loop that's on your hook. That is a slip stitch. That is how we will finish each round of the border. And I don't have a stitch marker here, but that very first stitch that we just joined to, that is where we're going to increase at. So if you wanted to place a stitch marker there, you could, but you're going to have to move it as soon as we start this next round. And now you know that you're going to work all the way across to the stitch marker, increase, work all the way down to the stitch marker, increase. So let's work round two. Each remaining round is worked exactly the same as round two is. We're going to chain one. We're going to work two single crochets into the same stitch that we just slip stitched to, which is the back loop. And then this first stitch, that's where we're going to slip stitch to, that's where we're going to increase for the next round. So again, if you wanted to put a stitch marker, you could, but I find that this first one is real easy to figure out. Now we're going to single crochet across, but working in the back loop only. Insert your hook down the center of the next stitch, splitting those loops in half. Continue. 
so that you pick just the back loop up on your hook, yarn over, pull through, two loops, yarn over, pull through both loops. Exactly the same process for the single crochet, we're just putting it in a different place of the, in the stitch. So insert your hook down the center, splitting those loops in half, continue downward to the wrong side, we have the back loop on our hook, and single crochet. Split the loops in half, picking just the back loop up, single crochet. Split the loops in half, picking up just the back loop only, and single crochet. And I have one more here. Now we've come to a stitch marker, so we're going to take the stitch marker off, and we're going to work our three single crochets into the back loop only of that next stitch. Then I'm going to put my stitch marker back right into the center one of those single crochets. There's one, two. That way when I work my next round, I know that's where I need to increase at. And we talked about before how we had a corner, three single crochets in a corner. Not counting that center single crochet of those corners, we have the three single crochets we worked in the middle, plus two single crochets on the inside of that corner. That makes for five stitches. Each round of the border, you're going to find that each side increases by two stitches. So this one had five. This one right here, we don't include the ones where the corners are going to be worked next. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven single crochets. So we went from five to seven. The next one, not counting the corners here, is going to have nine. The edges are the same way. Every side increases by two stitches, not counting the very center single crochet. Working down the sides and up the sides is so much easier now because the stitches all look identical. You're not working into the edges. So we're just working right into the back loop only, all the way until we get to our next stitch marker. So now we've reached our next stitch marker. I'm going to open it up and take it out and work my three single crochets right into that stitch. Then I'll find the center one and I'll put my stitch marker back. So next round I'll increase here, work all the way across, and increase again. It's the easiest way to do it. And if we're looking at the side here, we had worked five single crochets in the center then we add the two single crochets that are on the inside of the corner. Remember we don't include the very center, so we just include the inside one. 5 plus 2 is 7. Here in the next round, we're not counting these with the stitch markers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So each side increases by 2 stitches and that's because we're working extra stitches here in the corner. Now I'm just going to work straight across the bottom. Now I've come to my next stitch marker which is this piece of yarn and I'll just pull it out. Three single crochets into the back loop only of that stitch. Then I'll insert my hook back in and pull the scrap yarn through. And if you don't have either of these handy, you can use a bobby pin or a safety pin. You can use an earring if it's got a lever back. Now work upwards, and 
Let me count here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need one more single crochet. And now we're back to the beginning. We work one single crochet into the very first stitch. Now we have one, two, three single crochets for that corner. And we're going to slip stitch join, insert our hook into the center of the very first single crochet, picking up just the back loop only, yarn over, pull through that loop, and the loop on our hook. And that's round two. And you're going to continue working exactly that same way all the way around for as many rounds as you're doing. Chain one, two single crochets into the first stitch, single crochet all the way across till you get to the next corner, to the next center stitch of the corner where our stitch marker is, three single crochets. Work all the way down till you get to the next center single crochet of the corner where our next stitch marker is, three single crochets. Single crochet all the way across, three single crochets in the corner, single crochet all the way across, work one more single crochet into the first stitch, slip stitch join in the back loop only. Remember that you're always working in the back loop now. The first round of the board is the only one that was not in the back loop. That was our foundation. And again, if you don't want to work in the back loop, you can just work regular single crochets all the way around, but I have just shown you how to do it in the back loop. That's how the pattern is worked. Now I'm going to show you how to weave in your ends using a crochet hook. And I'm going to do that with a clip from, a, from another tutorial that I made. So you'll see orange fabric here. I have here the very top of my work where I finished my ball of yarn off. I pulled the loop to break it and I fastened off. I have here my 4.25 millimeter crochet hook. The most important thing with the smaller hook is that you have a deep enough mouth to help you pull the yarn through. I'm not going to weave in horizontally even though that's the easiest thing to do here. It just creates a lot of added bulkiness here that the bulkiness that's here on the side hides. And it limits the stretch width wise because the fabric has more stretch lengthwise so it really doesn't hinder it that way just by the nature of the way the rows are worked whereas the way that the stitches are worked widthwise it limits it so I'm just gonna work up and down into the side edge I'm only working through the loops on this side that's currently facing me this will be my wrong side so when I insert my hook I'm only gonna pick up one loop and you're only gonna see that from the wrong side on the right side, you do not see my crochet hook because I'm not going all the way through the fabric. I'm going to use this tap this crochet hook as if it was my tapestry needle. Tapestry needles don't really work in this fabric because it's just so much bulkiness and it's too hard to pull it through the fabric. It's so much easier with this crochet hook. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to just insert underneath several stitches starting down here because I just want to get several stitches that I can pull my yarn through. So I'm just picking up the top loop that's on this layer that's facing me. And so you can see all those loops that I have on my crochet hook but you cannot see it from the right side. This is the wrong side and on the right side you cannot see it. So when I pull my yarn through you will not see it on the right side. It's just getting trapped in between these stitches. And then you'll fix the fabric because it'll pull in on itself a little bit. And there's one pass. Now we turn the fabric. We go down to a stitch or two below where we're coming out from. And we pull it through on the other side. So this is going to loop around. And 
and now our tail end is secure around this loop and now we can return pass and it won't pull any of that yarn out that we just put in there. And we do the same exact thing, we just insert our hook under several stitches, working just on this layer that's closest to us. We yarn over and we pull it through. And I hold it with my thumb, the actual loop from the very beginning, so it doesn't pull in too tight. And then I release it and then I just tug on it a little bit. And now we have two passes. If you're comfortable with your yarn at this point, you think it caught really well, go ahead and fasten off. I always feel three passes is the, the best because it zigzags so much that it's not going to come out. So I'm going to work one more pass. And I'm doing it the same exact way. I'm just going to find a stitch that's nearby. And I will pull the yarn around it. So now that pass is secure, and I'm just going to go right back down through the same stitches I worked, picking up several stitches. Working just from this top layer, here's the loop where it starts. I hold it with my thumb, yarn over, pull through all those loops. and then I can finish it off with my finger and then I release with my thumb. Just tugging the fabric to make sure it's flat and even and now I can fasten off this tail end and it's not going to go anywhere. And that's how I weave in my ends so I will just continue. The written pattern for this is at ilovenots.com Thank you so much for watching my video. Please smash that like button and hit subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next video.